In this video, we're going to look at something that's very important in a, a general chemistry class, and that is looking at the lattice enthalpy of a compound. The lattice enthalpy of a compound is calculated using the born haber cycle, and the way I present it here is the way I would strongly encourage you to present it in your assessments. Um, before we look at it though, the lattice enthalpy is related to the ionic bond strength, but they're not, they're related the way cousins are related, they're not related the way siblings are related. <clears throat> um, to give you an analogy of what lattice enthalpy is, imagine you had a brick wall um, and you looked at two individual bricks. If you took two adjacent bricks and the mortar between those bricks, well, the strength of that mortar would be the ionic bond strength, right? What's holding the pieces of that wall together. That would be ionic bond strength. Lattice enthalpy is different. If you took the whole wall and you were instantly to quantify the strength of all of the mortar so that every single brick was free of all of its mortar, that would be the lattice enthalpy. So, um, again, the related as cousins, not as siblings. So let's have a look at it. Um, so it's a cycle. So we're going to, let's see the lowest I can draw is here. Okay. So I'll set up the, the cycle over here. So I would, I would essentially, I'm going to do a clockwise circle and right at the bottom, I'm going to write the Ionic compound, I'm going to calculate the lattice enthalpy of. So we're going to look at lithium fluoride. So let's say I've got a nice ionic compound. I've got my one-to-one -one joules of Proust definite proportion between lithium and fluorine. And I want to know the lattice enthalpy of lithium fluoride. Okay. So essentially, as I move up the board, it's going to be a positive energy. And as I move down the board, it's going to be a negative energy. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to um, separate the ionic compound into its elements in the standard state. So I know that lithium is naturally a solid because lithium is a metal and metals under standard conditions, where standard just means 25 degrees Celsius, metals at 25 degrees Celsius, other than mercury, are going to be a solid. So lithium is a solid. Now, fluorine isn't naturally F. It's naturally F2. It's a diatomic molecule, and it's a gas. So these are the elements under the standard conditions. But I only have one F but it comes as standard as F2. So I just want to add the coefficient a half because a half of two is one and that's exactly what I have. So I need to find the energy for this transition. Um, so at this point, it doesn't matter what the energy is. I'm going to go back through in a second and label these, but I know that anytime the arrow goes up, it's a positive energy. And any time my arrow comes down, it's a negative energy. So I've broken this interaction, this electrostatic interaction, and it's going to cost me energy. Okay. It doesn't matter whether you target the non-metal or the metal first. I tend to favor the metal just out of habit. I would encourage you to get into a habit. It's a lot harder to forget habits in an exam. So if you can make something a habit, you'll tend to remember it when you need to recall it in an assessment. So I'm now going to look at, essentially, I'm going to focus only on the metal, and I'm done with the metal once I've made it an ionic gas. So the goal here is to make every element an ionic gas. So I've already got a free element. I now need to give it some energy to convert it to the solid state to the gaseous state. So I'll have lithium gas. I haven't done anything to fluorine, so let's just rewrite in exactly the same way that it was here. So nothing's changed with fluorine, but I've obviously 
um, change from the solid phase to the gaseous phase, and we'll see what that's called in a second. Now I want to ionize the lithium, and once I do that, I'm done with lithium. So it's going to cost a bit more energy because that electron, although it's not held strongly, it's definitely not going to fall out on its own. There's some attraction to the nucleus. So I get lithium with a single positive charge in the gaseous phase. I haven't done anything yet to fluorine, which is still a half a mole of F2 gas. So now I'm done with lithium. So I'm just going to circle lithium because lithium is exactly where I want it. It's an ionic gas. Okay, now I just want to continue adding energy to process fluorine. So I need to add a bit more energy, keep going up in the energy expenditure. I'm not going to do anything new now to lithium. But I do need to do something to F2. So right now, that half F2 means I have half a mole's worth of F2 molecules. I want a whole mole's worth of F atoms. So I need to break half a mole of bonds so I can just get a single mole of F gas. Again, I've conserved mass. Instead of a half F2, I've now got one F. But now I've got single atoms rather than molecules. And that cost me some energy because fluorine likes to be bonded to a neighboring fluorine for electro electronegativity reasons and to fill its valence shell and what have you. Okay, so that cost me energy. So now I'm going to start claiming some energy back. Um, I'm not drawing these energy levels to scale. So if I put a line here, it doesn't mean it's exactly the same energy as this line. But just in case that is a temptation, I'm deliberately going to make it not on the same line. Uh, but don't read in anything to this being a different value than this. I just haven't stated the values yet. Okay, so I haven't done anything to lithium. So let's just rewrite that for good bookkeeping. But what I've done, I've taken F and now I need to ionize it. Um, into its anion, which is F minus gas. So now I've got the second ion exactly where I want it. Uh, you can go ahead if you like and bubble all the ions if you want that visual cue. And you've, you're done when you have both ions in the gaseous phase on the same, written on the same line. So this has been a liberation of energy. So the arrow went down. And we'll see why in a second. We'll comment why in a second. Okay, the lattice energy bridges the gap. The lattice energy is always positive. So if you ever go on a, a YouTube or Google and it says lattice energy is negative, um, either leave that site because it's wrong or a well-intentioned person has presented it in a way that you've misinterpreted because lattice enthalpy is always positive. How do you know? You're breaking things that are attracted to each other and that always costs energy. So this is the lattice en en enthalpy. We're going to call the lattice enthalpy enthalpy delta H, subscript L for lattice. It's always going to be positive. And as you can see here, I've drawn it as an up arrow. So this is our delta H L. So we just need to know what the energy values for these steps were, and we can calculate delta H L. So I'm going to find these values in a table. I'll put them in, and then we'll continue our discussion. Okay, so by the help of a, a, table of, a table of values, which would in any assessment will be provided to you, uh, you just have to know what you're looking for. <clears throat> I've entered the numerical values for these energy changes. <clears throat> Again, first notice the way I've, I'm instructing you to do this here. Every arrow that points up is a positive value. Every arrow that points down is a negative value. 
and the missing gap which points up always is the lattice enthalpy that we need. So the first thing is we've got an ionic compound that's being split up into its constituents. Well, if this were the opposite way around, if we went from the constituent elements in their standard state back to the ionic compound, we would be forming an ionic compound. So if I were to go from here to here, I'd need the enthalpy of formation of lithium fluoride. But because I'm going in the opposite direction and energy in this case is a vector, it's the negative of the enthalpy of formation of lithium fluoride. So you would find the lithium fluoride formation value and just change the sign of the number. So in a table of contents, a table of values, you'd have this value, negative 594.1. You'd need to know to flip the sign because you're undoing that formation. So I'm going to call this negative the standard enthalpy of formation of lithium fluoride solid. So we're decomposing lithium fluoride, so that's the negative standard enthalpy of formation. Here we've gone, taken lithium in the solid state and we've converted it to the gaseous state without going through the liquid state. So this is just sublimation. So this is the enthalpy, standard enthalpy of sublimation of lithium in the solid state. Again, sublimation is just going from the solid state to the gaseous state while bypassing the liquid state. Here, we've just taken lithium in the gaseous state and we've converted it into an ion. So we've just got the ionization energy. Now, lithium only has one valence electron, so it only has one ionization energy. So there's no point saying the first ionization energy if, if there's one out of one. If we had something like calcium, which had two valence electrons and therefore could have the first ionization energy and the second ionization energy, we'd have to look at both the first and the second and we'd have to label them appropriately. But because there's only one ion, ion uh, sorry, one electron here, we can just save the ionization energy. So I'm gonna call this um, the ionization energy, i.e. of lithium gas. Here we've not done anything to lithium now, but we've broken the bond between fluorine atoms and we've broken half a mole's worth. So this value is going to be um, the bond enthalpy, standard bond enthalpy. And actually I've only got, standard means per mole, I've only got half a mole. So I've got the standard bond enthalpy over two, which just means I've got half a mole, because remember standard is normalized per mole. I've got half a mole, so I have to divide by two of F2 gas. And that's that energy, which we, we learn is 75.3 kilojoules in a table. Over here, I've got my only negative value and that's because of the chemistry of fluorine. Fluorine now is going to be ionized. It's going to gain an electron. Well, fluorine is highly electronegative. Fluorine doesn't have to be force-fed an electron. Fluorine is going to hunt that electron. And just like when, you know, if you imagine a predatory animal arriving at dinner, it's not going to slowly come up to its dinner. It's going to attack its dinner and there's going to be a release of energy. So likewise, when a fluorine atom pounces on an electron, there's going to be a release of energy, and we know that a release of energy is a negative value. So this is um, an affinity value, an electron affinity value. So this is the electron affinity of fluorine gas. And we bridge the gap to calculate delta H L which is always positive. So I guess we're looking at standard conditions, so I'll put standard here. So we know that the standard uh, lattice enthalpy of lithium fluoride is now gonna be the sum of all of these values. 
We can sum them, remember, because enthalpy is a state function, and I just need to add all the pieces together. So I've got uh, 594.1, so five nine four point one plus 155.2, plus 520, plus um, 75.3, plus negative 328. The whole thing is going to have units of kilojoules. So I'm just going to look at what the answer to that was. Okay, so the answer should be positive 1017 kilojoules. Again, lattice enthalpy is always positive. Uh, so this is the way I'd recommend that you do it. Um, and it will always give you a positive answer.